Hi, I'm Tim Daniels from lapsoftheshutter.com and in this video we're going to cover how to go from flat photos with mediocre lighting like this to photos with powerful and natural sunsets like this and from this to this. So let's start with this photo of the Azure window in Gozo, part of Malta. It was a grey overcast day with no hint of a sunset, so how can we add one in? Unlike when we're enhancing sunsets that are already present in our photos, when we want to create one from scratch, it's best to set the white balance to something fairly neutral, like 5000 to 6000. The idea behind this is to minimise any colour cast. We will add the sunset entirely through filters. We can start adding the sunset by selecting the graduated filter tool and setting the temperature somewhere between 25 and 50. Decide where you want your sunset to go, in this case in the top left, and begin gradually layering filters in that area. To create a believable sunset, you'll have to layer multiple filters, all at slightly different angles to give the impression of natural light fall off. Make the tint more purple on some of the filters to increase the strength of the effect, and you may also want to increase contrast, clarity and sharpness to give the sky some texture. To the side of the photo opposite the sunset, you can add graduated filters with a negative or blue temperature, again making contrasts and any other minor adjustments that you might want. Just a few filters layered in this way will create a powerful sunset. But to really finish it off and make it stand out, you need to add blue to the rest of the sky. You can usually get away with adding only one filter for the blue sky, with a temperature set for about minus 50. In this case, we have quite a lot of water that I'd also like to make blue, so I'll switch to circular gradient filters, also set to a cool temperature, and draw those over the sea. And that's one sunset added, from this to this. You can now go through the rest of the develop module as you normally would to finish off the photo. I would use a Lightroom develop system, a series of over 1000 stackable presets, available for free from lapsoftheshutter.com. Now let's look at a slightly more complex example of adding a sunset. This photo of Santorini was taken in the evening at around sunset, but in this case the sun disappeared into a hazy cloud and didn't create the colours and warmth I was hoping for. If you have a photo like this of an underwhelming sunset, chances are there is something more in the photo that you can pull out with the tone curve. Most people only use the tone curve for adding contrast, but it is much more powerful than this. By clicking on the symbol in the bottom right, you can access the red, green and blue curves individually. With these curves, you can change the colour balance according to brightness. Let me show you what I mean. The brightest parts of the photo, the area where the sun is setting and where the light is hitting the white buildings, are represented by the top end of the curve here. So if we push the top end of the red curve up, we make those already bright areas both more bright and more red. If we then change the blue curve and reduce the curve at the top end, we reduce the brightness of the sunset and reduce the amount of blue in it. This has the effect of making it seem even more yellow and red to our eyes. If we continue to make a few more small adjustments to all three of the curves, we can powerfully boost the sunset colours already present in our photo. It's just a few small changes to go from this to this. If this seems a bit complicated for you, there's plenty of opportunity to learn with the Lightroom Develop System which contains plenty of these tone curve colour presets to try out. You can download it for free from lapsoftheshutter.com. Now that we've got the basis for the sunset, we can use filters just like before to perfect it. We can use a large, soft, circular gradient filter set to a temperature of 50 and with an exposure, contrast and clarity boost to create the setting sun. Make sure that the feathering is on to simulate light fall off. 
Then we can move the filter off to the side to lessen the effect and make it seem more natural. The borders of this filter still don't look quite right, so we can use another circular gradient to further help the blend. Then use a graduated filter to return blue to the parts of the sky that need it, again using a negative temperature. If there are any clouds that you want to enhance, turn up the clarity and sharpness. If you want the sky to be soft, turn both of them down. And that's the photo finished. With a bit more work in Lightroom, using the Lightroom Develop system, you can take this photo even further. And so here's the before and the after. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you want more free tutorials, including the Landscape Masterclass and free tools like the Lightroom Develop System, take a look at lapsofthushutter.com. Thanks for watching.